Good evening. By day, I am the writer, editor, lore keeper, board game designer, and stream host over at City State Entertainment. But this evening, as with many evenings, I am uh, a dungeon master preparing for uh, my own campaign. So, tonight... Uh, tonight I am going to be working on a villain mind map. Uh, now, I've used these before in a campaign uh, to great effect. Uh, it's essentially a very simple and straightforward way of keeping track of of a vast conspiracy, uh, or at least keeping track of many different organizations. Um, part of the thing about uh, part of the thing about uh, uh, running a campaign that uh, isn't railroady, that has no preset story. Um, for the players to follow, um, but that is really in this, ooh, that music is loud, uh, that is really, um, for the players to, uh, a, a game that is, allows the players to go where they want, that is driven by the players, uh, and their desires, and what interests them, um, it can really help to uh, have lots and lots of uh, organizations uh, and characters and figures. Uh, and the uh, and the connections between them and to make that whole world come alive. okay, the whole the way to make that all come alive and and keep track of it, and make sense of it, and but more than just simple tracking to uh, allow you the freedom, or at least allow me the freedom uh, to make things up on the spot, even while staying within what I know uh, to be uh, the 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 world that I've created, the character. Uh, and organizational motivations that I've established. Uh, the way to do that is, uh, well, one way to do it is with a mind map. So I'm going to be creating one of those. Uh, and all of that explanation really boils down to something quite simple. Um, so I'm just going to open up paint and I'm going to make myself a file. Now, normally I would do this with uh, pen and paper because, I don't know, it's physical and it's easy for me to edit, but uh, this being an online game and uh, since I want to be able to show you guys what I'm doing, uh, I'm going to just do something simple in paint. So, uh, I'm going to make this a nice big document. In the background we have the town of Taurin, where the players are currently at. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and since I really have no plans on printing this, there's nothing stopping me from making it bigger than a printed page. Uh, really. So I'll just make it whatever size I want. I'll make it a size that is going to fit on my uh, monitor easily. When I open it up in the middle of, of the game uh, to check it. Okay, so the thing to do here is I'm just going to write down a bunch of the villains and organizations that are at play. I gotta open up my uh, campaign notes. 
and I'm going to draw the connections between them. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. I just need to have my notes open so I can make sure I'm spelling things the way that I made up they were spelled. Uh, because nothing will spoil a, a world faster than the DM um, forgetting things like that. <laughs> or messing them up. As happens, unfortunately. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to make sure to give myself enough room to do all this. Um... So the more connected uh, uh, villains, um, I'm going to want toward the middle in this zone. Uh, the less connected villains can be more at the corners, and that's really just going to be a convenience thing. It's not really a big deal either way. Uh, so. Uh, one of the villains that I know is going to go toward the middle uh, is the um, the kind of elemental elementalist themed uh, gang of villains that was revealed through um, through. Uh, Krim's backstory uh, a couple of episodes ago, a couple of sessions ago. Um, I think I'll just make this a little wider, because why not? Um, so, one of these... Uh, so, one, one that can go toward the middle is going to be that elementalist organization. Uh, and that's going to have, that has several names um, near it, uh, which are the main, the, the elementalist figures. Um, so there's this, you know, this master of water, of fire, of earth, and of air. Um, and this is a classic case of, I didn't come up with all the specifics of this organization, but let's, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to be building upon, I'm going to be taking what the players have made up, because I gave them free reign uh, to make stuff up for their backstories. And I said, you know, I'll let you make stuff up if you let me change it as I need to uh, for the game. And that's exactly what I'm doing, unbeknownst partially to them, although they are going to find out uh, in dramatic fashion. So... Um, let's make the text at least 10 points so I can read it. Alright, now what is the name of this organization? Uh, they are, we know that, uh, from Krim's backstory, that they are human sorcerers, or rather, the water... Uh, master in this evil organization uh, that drowned the city from which our dragonborn hero is from. Uh, we know that that is a human sorcerer. We don't have any details about him or her beyond that, I don't think. Uh, there are many, many details in Krim's backstory that I should make certain I get right. Um, so, let's see. Uh, let me check her backstory as it is on here. 
Krim, Finch Stall is not her real name, her clan. Uh, I have her real name in a separate backstory she wrote. Uh, clan was unknown, water twin trap and drown. Grass on outside the city, the death of father. Hmm. I should check the map. Did I actually establish that there are grasslands outside of where I told her Lagrana was? I told her Lagrana was here. So, you know, this could be grassland. Or maybe they're flooded now. Maybe this is flooded land over here. We've got a fungal forest over there. And this is all forest, so not exactly grasslands. And that's like a swamp or something. Um... But, yeah, I can always say that the grasslands have flooded as well. Uh, death of their father refused to leave. No home. Music is a bit loud. Um, she's much more comfortable with animals when not humans. Alphire itself is okay. Alright, this is mostly about her personality and not hard facts uh, okay so that's Lagrana there are arcane houses uh, Lagrana's over here um, she joined a tribe Uh, or of orcs. Um, she gets a crush on an orc. That's interesting. She kind of lost and failed her way forward uh, until she ended up here in the middle of the uh, map where the game started. Alright. Cool. So she hasn't made up a name for these sorcerers. That's fine. Now, I do have another player. Oh, uh, wait, what was the secret I gave I gave her? Let me check my notes here. So these are my notes. Uh, I've got um, all the character stuff. Uh, character histories. Crim French Stall. Secret stories are strange. Going to Rampage. Sending stones. A pattern of appearance of stories calling them the Netheros. It's like going to leave an appearance of the Netherico. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, these are the acolytes of the shadow. So so Equitus's, I want to make sure that Equitus's um you know wanted to check whether I gave him like the same name. <coughs> Excuse me. Of an evil organization or a different one. So it's different. So that's good. So I'm actually going to put the Netheros pretty much in the middle here. Got some cool font going on, but I'm just going to let it be. Uh, I want it bigger. Because if this is the scale I'm going to be looking at this, it's going to be hard to read otherwise. That's better. Okay. So, the Netheros are toward the middle, and 
they are going to very quickly be connected here because um, I think I'm definitely going to want uh, you know wait you know who needs to be even more in the middle is a villain I set up from the very beginning of the campaign which is Lou Lou KOS Lou Koss Um, because he slew Vale Proudheart. Okay. So I'm going to put Lou there. Now Lou, uh, Lou is going to be pretty strongly connected to the Netheros. Um, I haven't a hundred percent decided whether he is. Um, the master of air, although they keep seeing him moving quickly and flying, so it would, would certainly make sense. Uh, in any case, he's probably allied with them. So. Uh, I'm drawing a line between these, and I can always clean this up later if I want to. Uh, so, Lucas is possibly a member of the Netheros. Um, okay. Okay. Now, uh, we also are going to have this Master of Fire, and Master of Water, and Master of Earth. Now, the Master of Earth I is going to have his own evil organization as well. Uh, because I'm going to connect that to the Scarred Earth Cult, which is something... Um, the player Akiri made up. The player uh, Emily made up for Akiri's backstory as enemies of the Sword Wings. So let's get let's get all that out there. Um, until I think of a better, until I make up the names, it's gonna be Earthmaster. And water master that is significant, but um, we'll figure that out. Now, now, you may be wondering why this weird method. That will become clear, I promise. Why am I writing it out in this sort of physical way instead of making a list of names, etc. I will make that clear soon. I've got to edit the... I've got to come up with names for these these guys, these characters. Um, but I just want to keep moving for now and not get hung up on the names. Now, they actually met this Fire Master in the game because he showed up to steal the map that they left in the well. Alright. I'm actually trying a new thing here, which is this color coding stuff. To show that there is a positive relationship. As those are the four elemental masters of the Netheros. Now there's they are allies. Now another organization 
Uh, now, this isn't going to be a villainous one, uh, necessarily. At least it doesn't have a villainous reputation. Uh, are the sword wings, which are mainly a bunch of Arakokra uh, heroes. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the sword wings down here. Actually, they should be up high, because they fly. And these the reason I actually care about the arrangement of things is because I'm going to use this mind map to suggest connections and story twists uh, and so forth that I might not otherwise have come up with. So, the sword wings, um, so I'm going to put the, uh, the sword wings are going to have a negative relationship, uh, and I'll put them over here, with the scarred earth cult. Great name uh, for an evil organization that was handed to me by a player. Why on earth would I not use it? Um, now, my Earthmaster kind of ended up far away from the Scarred Earth Cult, but you know what? I'm just going to let that lie. I'm going to let that be. Uh. Or no, I could I could put the Scarred Earth Cult. If I'm putting the Sword Wings up top, I should put the Scarred Earth Cult down low. So, there you go. So, the Sword Wings have a negative relationship with the Scarred Earth Cult. Man, this is going to be a riot of color before I'm done. That's alright. That's okay. I'm not planning on using too many more colors, so maybe... If I'm only keeping it to black, green, and red, maybe it'll be okay. Okay. So now the mind map uh, is starting to take shape, right? Um, I've got, uh, you know, I've got all uh, various connections, and there's a scarred earth cult. Uh, and so one thing I had been thinking is, oh, the Scarred Earth Cult leader could be this Earth Master. He's also a member of the Netheros. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of wondering, maybe he's just connected with the Scarred Earth Cult, and they're actually a separate organization. And that is suggested to me by the mind map, because I want it to... Uh, because I'm kind of seeing, like, you know, that's a little awkward. That they're separate entities. Uh, for him to be a servant of two masters, as it were. A master of two, of two masters. Master of two organizations. Uh, is confusing. Uh, and it's also a principle of good dungeon master campaign planning. To uh, set up... Uh, multi-layered foes, which means that, you know, the basic enemies are controlled by, are influenced by, you know, other guys who are maybe more powerful, uh, and then those are influenced by even more secret and even more powerful dudes, and those are, you know, and so you get this sort of natural escalation uh, in the story, and by natural, I mean it's player-driven, and it's not, it doesn't feel like the GM, um, Game Master, um, it doesn't feel like the, you're, the, you know, it helps the GM avoid leading people along and saying, well, you know, you know, you know, uh, don't go that way because, you know, kind of preventing players from going to the, you know, pursuing like low level enemies when they're high level or vice versa, pursuing high level enemies when they're low level because, it's only it's only going to be natural. It's kind of setting it up ahead of time, right? But it's going to feel like uh, organic because the players are um, making these decisions on their own. 
uh, it's not being forced on them, uh, but it's only natural that things will escalate because they're going to, because the GM has cleverly set up kind of multi, la multiple layers of enemies. And that's why we do the mind map, because I wouldn't have necessarily realized that I was missing that opportunity until I set this up. So let's keep doing this, because as we as we get this denser, it's going to get more and more interesting. So what else have we got? What else have we got? We have Chowderth. Chowderth is a dragon. Um... Not, probably not going to be super connected to any of these. Although, now I'm wondering. Uh, because she is a red dragon. Uh, and hates the players. Um, because they were there when her mate was slaughtered. But she also, uh, she also might have some animosity toward Lucas. Who helped to kill her mate? Um, so there's some interesting relationships there. Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna put Chowderth over on this side, not toward the middle. Okay. Interesting. We'll see what that suggests in terms of connections. Um, we shall see. We shall see. Chowderth might end up being more connected than I think right now. Uh, but she's up on the map. Um, the Netheros... I left out the word the, so I'll just add that in. It's more impressive if they are the Netheros than just Netheros. Is Netheros in a smaller type font? Uh, it might be. Smaller font size? I think it is, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Um. And a good thing to do here would be actually to get the players' names on. Now, I don't normally do that. Um, but I do have seven players, plus uh, a guest star uh, recently. So that might be a good plan. The problem is that I'll see the problem with doing with doing the players' names here is it's constantly shifting around. Uh, they're constantly shifting around, and while I can you know draw and uh, and erase lines, it's gonna happen too often um, for the players. Besides, I don't really get to decide what their relationship is. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Orinar of the Steel Tooth Pack will attend the Bennett move. So actually, I miswrote this. Orinar captured by the Steel Tooth Pack. So this is a character from one of the player's backgrounds, Bref the Barbarian. Um. And he will be auctioned at the bandit moon. Um, and now we have the Steel Tooth Pack and its mysterious captain. So they are basically pirates. Uh, I don't currently think the Steel Tooth Pack. They seem more like Lobie villains to me. I wonder what date I gave him for that. 
Um, the second day in the month of Man. January, February, March. Is Manned March? In my own calendar and world? No. Mariko. January, February, March, April, May. May for Manned. Manned for May. So I actually put that pretty far out. Uh, which I regret. <laughs> I put that a little too far out. Um, hmm. It's a little weird that the, um, that that event is so far in the future. Um, I think I got my own months mixed up. So I've got to decide whether to do the gross thing of telling the player, yeah, I wrote the, uh, you know, your secret wrong, and I've got to move the date up, you know, quite a bit, which I really don't want to do. Or, um, or come up with some reason why it would take this long for him to follow up on, uh, this slave auction thing. I'm actually leaning toward moving it up, because it was an honest mistake. Definitely meant for it to be Mariko, not manned. Of my own made up months. Uh, Alright, well, let's worry about that later. Right now, we're putting the Steel Tooth pack on the mind map. So, they are some bandits. And I don't currently know what or who, if anybody, they're connected to. Other than Orinar, whom they have captured. Uh, and Orinar was Bref's kind of friend character that he put in his backstory. But I'm actually wondering if maybe Orinar has joined the Steel Tooth Pack. That's kind of what I've, where I've been going with it. So maybe Orinar has joined the Steel Tooth Pack. And using his powers his connection to a goddess uh, for the benefit of these pirates turned land bandits. Uh, let me check the character history here. Umberly. So Umberly is a goddess name from um, well, from the player's handbook. Uh, but from Forgotten Realms. And I made a feasty. Uh, my version of Umberlay. And I put that in there for later in case I needed to, uh... Man, this music is bumming me out right now. It's good for villains and spookiness, but I'm not feeling it right now. Okay. I may have to check on the baby. So hang on. I don't know what connections the Steel Tooth Pack have. Maybe they're connected to the Watermaster of the Netheros, but I don't want to force that just yet. Although it would make sense because we do have the drowning of Lagrana up here, and this is kind of where it fades off to the ocean, 
in my head. Um, although that could just as easily be down here. Uh, so I have to think about that. All right. Um, something to think about. Something to think about. Uh, I don't. I don't love it necessarily because I want the steel teeth pack kind of to be their own thing. But I got to remember my own advice: make these multiple tiers. But I, I've got to get more more of these names of villains up here. Chowder the clever. Uh, okay. Who else we got? Um, Arkney in the Library of Ibu Gruger. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of details about the town of Arkney and its governor. Um, let's see. I had Dell, head librarian. Ba ba ba. Okay, certainly interesting. Um, but prob possibly not worthy of being put up on the mind map. Um, Emin, rich and ambitious. Uh, Emin still wants more. I wrote all this, by the way. He's extremely competitive with the library, tries to keep it under wraps. Uh, wraps. I had wields. I think I put two L's here and one L above. Respect the money and interest. Library of Kruger. Governor is extremely interested in the town and is pushing for the funds to continue building out a large marketplace and paving the roads near Arkney in order to expand trade opportunities and keep merchant caravans around longer. Ideally, he'd get his wife Zizia's permission to marry off their daughter, Nacella. And I left a comma there because I was leaving it open. Uh, to whom he would like to... marry her off to. Oh man, that's a great name for a cake shop. Uh, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Might have been uh, generated by a random generator though. And then I uh, used it, because it was great. Um... All right. Uh, I think that uh, the city of Arkney and Taurine, none of these are really um, necessarily worth putting up on the board. Maybe Arkney. Arkney is here, and is a fairly significant town, especially because of that library. I think I will do it. Uh, the question is whether I want to break that out into... Um, I mean, I don't really want to end up with every single town and every single governor or mayor or whatever. Um, every single, you know, character on this mind map. Um... I think I'll leave off for the moment. Okay. That was worth thinking about. Um, White Ranch, Star of the Sword Wings, The Shadow. So the Acolytes of the Shadow are an organization I definitely want to put up on here. Um... They are from Acolytes of the Shadow. Now, I should double check that they don't have some other name as well. Uh, okay, Equitus, Wealthy Teethling Family, Warlock, Acolytes of the Shadow. There you go. See, if when the player hands you a knife, use it. The Dark Six. Okay. Well, now there are going to be six dark deities. So we'll see how that works out for you. Um, I 
Should I put them up in this corner? I think that's fine. So, the Acolytes of the Shadow. Uh, Opal, Equitus, Spectrum is used a trial, Rhythm Warlock for the Shadow. Uh, right, so the Acolytes of the Shadow are Warlocks. Shadow's Compound, Soft and Compassionate, Smart, a little weak. Whoa, kicked Tate out of the Warlock School. Okay, so he was, he grew up uh, as part of a cult. <laughs> Total cult. Um, I think I'm going to make these a little smaller because it's a long text. I'm actually going to put them down here. Um, I don't know what I'm saving this for, but something is telling me... Something is telling me this is going to work. So... Acolytes of the Shadow. Um, there we go. And then we have the Dark Six. The Dark Six. Oh boy, six. Okay. I'm gonna put them right here. And one of the dark six is the shadow. All right, and now I need some synonyms for darkness. <laughs> Don't let me down, thesaurus. Dot com dark gloom okay I'll take that uh, here we go you know uh, I've got enough on here that I need to save this I'm just gonna save it to the wildlands files for the moment Villain mind map. Of course, the sword wings aren't villains. Necessarily. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. I need to add that in as well. Uh, okay, so I'm putting in the dark six right now. Let's not get too distracted. Uh, I mean, it's weird having the green lines, but I guess it makes sense. Um, okay. So positive relationship. So that's my legend is I'm going to put green lines for positive relationships, red lines for enmity. Okay. And I'm going to put uh, the gloom. <laughs> oh, Equitus, what have you done? What have you done? Six demigods. And I'm just following the naming convention that he has laid down. Alright. I'm gonna put the gloom over here because I think the gloom is a cool name and I'll it'll make it easy to connect to other people. Uh on my mind map. But I'm gonna the less good name I'm gonna put up here. <laughs> um but I'll come back to the Dark Six, because i got to put the Sword Wings one down that I keep forgetting. So this is another significant character. Now, unbeknownst, here's a, here's a story beat. So if you're listening to this, Emily, stop listening now. All right? You, you do not want to have this spoiled for you. Uh... The leader of the Sword Wings has been corrupted, and um, and uh, has 
has maybe always was, but has certainly now turned toward evil. I don't know. I haven't figured out every detail, and that's on purpose, because if I lay down every single detail about every single villain and every single organization and every single story beat, well, then I've written a novel and not a campaign. So I want to make sure that I le leave myself uh, room to change things in the moment uh, in response to what the players do and as ideas come and as the players invent stuff. Because th as a game, this is all about the push and pull between the players. The conversation uh, is the way John Harper describes uh, an RPG in Blades in the Dark rulebook. Uh, a conversation between the GM and the players. So, um, I'm not. No, I did decide on the name, and I'm not sure I told her the name. Okay. Daisio. All right. So the sword wings are controlled. Dicio, he of the twin blades. You know what? I'm just going to write Dicio and I'll add of the twin blades in my own notes. So, um, a very unusual Aarakocra is Dicio. Um, I'm thinking of Peacock. Alright, so Dicio is the leader of the Sword Wings. And Dicio is going to have a somewhat dubious relationship. Uh, with a lot of other characters, and the sword wings are all about fear the skies, and so they have a strange relationship. Um, with the Empire of Ebb and the Vey Empire. Uh, or at least the Empire of Ebb, which fell to the mysterious doom. Okay. So I've got lots of ideas swirling around, and now I'm kind of getting them down in uh, a way that's going to let me remember the connections between them uh, without a lot of detail uh, like in here, because this gets cluttered. This gets cluttered. Uh, or even if I kept it super organized, um, and only wrote down ideas when I was ready to organize them, which I do not recommend. Um, I would still, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't use it in that case. So this is something I can pop up and use and can give me ideas and inspiration in the moment. Uh, and also keep track of the general thrust of things. So, do I want to have the shade as well as the shadow? Maybe. The dim. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have that. The dusk. I think the dusk is a good name for one of the dark six. Uh, I've got to be in... Uh, stop that. There. Look it up. Sorry, those notifications are... Coming from me. Ah. My wife is telling me we had a minor disagreement, she and the kid, about whether she was tired. <laughs> oh boy. Alright. Sorry, honey. Uh, okay. So another one of the Dark Six is going to be... Um, what was it? 
the dusk. The dusk is another cool name. So we'll put that over here on this side. I told them, feel free to create stuff. And they did. Oh, did they? All right, let's keep going because this is fun. Um, I keep covering up my camera. I gotta fix my camera here. Hang on a sec, folks. Anyone who's watching this later. Um, camera, 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 camera. deactivated on on roll 20 to make it work there we go okay hi there folks now you can see uh, now you can see my full face all right so where was I yes the dark six uh, so following the naming convention that was laid down by the player, uh, we have the Shadow, was the first one he came up with, uh, and put in his character backstory. And as I keep saying, when the player when a player hands you a dagger, uh, it is your job as the dungeon master to use it. So I'm, I am using it by making six dark demigods. Uh, the Shadow... The gloom, the dusk. I don't want to call it the dim because that's too stupid. The umbra. Um. The obscure. That's not so terrible. I mean, it's dumb. But it would make sense for me to put it up in the far top left corner of my mind map. Um, because the obscure is probably not going to have a lot of connections to a lot of these other uh, characters and organizations. So that's fine. I'm going to put the obscure right here. And that's going to suggest something. I know it. All right. So, the obscure is part of the dark six. So I'm drawing a green line uh, as that is how I'm showing a positive connection. One more name, um, two more names for the dark six. Um, maybe they're not demigods. Maybe they're just very powerful mortals that have this cult of warlocks. Hmm. Certainly possible. I don't want to call anything the black. The eclipse. The merc. Oh, the merc is good. the Dark Six are going to figure large in the story. But they are here for me to use. And they may get... I may draw a line just for interest's sake way over the other side of the mind map. And that may be a very interesting connection indeed. Okay, so now I've got five. I only need one more member of the Dark Six. The Blackout. Hmm. 
The Umbra. I don't really don't like the Umbra. Umbra is a cool word. But the Umbra doesn't sound cool. The Eclipse is kind of a mouthful, awkward to say, but with two E sounds. The Tenebrous. No. The Shade? The sh oh, did I already use the Shade? No, the Shade is pretty close to the Shadow. Hmm. One more member of the Dark Six. One more member of the Dark Six. The Drab. The Dull. No. Um, the Somber. Hmm. Did I use the dusk already? I did, yeah. Thought that was pretty cool. Mm. The Stygian. <laughs> hmm. I guess I'll go with the shade. They don't all have to be gems. Of your choices, the Nightfall is cool. Uh, hi there, Cranky Coyote. Welcome. Throw me a follow. Hang out. That's a great suggestion. The Nightfall. I love it. Thank you. You saved me from using both the Shadow and the Shade. Or just... Maybe just the Night. The Nightfall. I like Nightfall better. Excellent. Thank you so much for that suggestion. That is awesome. Okay. So that's going to make some interesting ideas pop up. So... We just populated this whole area of the mind map here uh, with a lot of dark characters. And that's going to be a rich source of villainy, no doubt. Um, okay, I'm just going to make sure I get all of my already created villains up on here um, so I can start getting more ideas. Uh, okay. Um. Center of the Swamps of Varan, kind of the death place of a god where the void cap grows. Okay. So the void cap mushroom. Um. I wrote a secret for a player that they know that the void cap mushroom can be used for a ritual of the great unmaking. Now, I think that's going to have a connection to the Netheros. Uh, but I don't know who is going to um... I don't know who's going to be doing the Great Unmaking, because I feel like the Netheros, I think their goal um, is to found a new empire in the Wildlands, right? This wild country that has gone through at least two empires in the last thousand years uh, and keeps breaking apart into these splintered territories. Um... And the Netheros probably wants to forge their own empire. Um, and are willing to do anything in order to accomplish that. Now, um, let's see. So, 
I'm going to put down the Great Unmaking. Which, I'm going to double check my notes that that's what I called it, because I don't want to mess that up and have to correct myself to a player later. So I'm check what I wrote here. Uh, this was a long secret, because uh, Cordy wrote a short backstory. <laughs> so I had to fill in some information. There's your Void Cat, the Swamps of Varankana. Uh, maybe the Swamps of Varankana are named for the dead god or this organization. Um, the Great Unmaking Ritual. Okay. Could be both the name of an organization uh, and the name of um, the ritual they want to perform. I mean, it's a little on the nose to call them the Unmakers. The Unmakers want to perform the ritual of the Great Unmaking. So maybe um, the Forgotten of Varenkana. Okay. And one of the Dark Six. Uh, could be the Dead God. At whose death place the Void Cap Mushroom grows. So, um... Maybe I'll just call them the Forgotten. Well, the Forgotten of Varankana. Hmm. I don't really know why I'm putting him in that corner, but I am. I guess I thought that corner was getting lonely. Um, no, I'll put him over here. Might as well be picky. So I'm going to use my first black line, because they have a connection to the Obscure. Which is going to be the Dead God. One of the Dark Six is dead. Um, and his acolytes wish to perform, the, his former acolytes wish to perform the Great Unmaking. Cool. So, 
They don't exactly have a positive relationship with the Obscure. Mm, it's not that it's not exactly that they thought the Obscure was this great god. They just want to kind of use the death of this god um, to their advantage. Now, I recently. Let me make sure I get this demon in. This devil in that I give them the name of Dalvroxos. dead and gone um, but definitely have an outsized influence and there are beings that still remember uh, these people so like Balvroxos an immortal devil He had a contentious relationship with the kingdom of Ebb. Um, cares less about the Vey Empire. And now this connection was suggested to me by the proximity uh, of where these things ended up here. Now I'm wondering if there's a connection between the Scarred Earth Cult and Balroxos. I think there probably is. So one question is, why... Um... One question is, why does Lucas need to capture the unconscious body of a powerful paladin. What's it to him? Uh, well, I think I need to make an entry in uh, with more details over here. Actually. Uh, because this is going to be important. Okay, so the Netheros is actually just has four actual members in it. <sighs> really? Lucas, rogue, I'll say he's, you know, rogue, I don't know what level he is, he's high level, 
Maybe 20th, maybe 15th. Uh, and here's where I need some names. Now, did I already give a name to the Master of Fire? Elemental Sorcerers. All right, I didn't, I didn't write that down. Good. That's a good thing. All right, let's get some villainous names going. Best villainous name generator is Fantasy Name Generators. I love this website. Um, is it uh, Evil Name Generator? These are kind of neat. Uh, Richard Killerin. Chalice Notley. Interesting. Uh, but the even better one is the Necromancer. Name generator, if I recall correctly. Yeah, here we go. Because it comes with some... Uh, it comes with some... Um, Titles. These are just great. These are great. Brazius the Defiler. Stadulus Grame. I highly recommend the Necromancer name generator for your villain needs. Um... Uh... Okay. Ooh, Gavok the Hollow. Creepy. Okay. I like Brazius. Um. So, I'll change a little bit though. Uh, well, Brazius. Brazius the Defiler. Uh, Master of uh, Fire. Now, I haven't decided completely what class he is, but possibly a sorcerer. Sork? What else we got? I love Gevok the Hollow. Gevok the Hollow, Master of Water. What else we got? Wait, Gevok, that's such a guttural name. I think that's gotta be a Master of Earth. Um, and what is Gavok's class? Um, the Hollow. Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe a Fighter with Earth powers would be pretty cool. Um, it's kind of interesting. Or maybe he's hollow because he feels rage. Barbarian. That's interesting. That's pretty interesting. The 
rage. He's hollow because it, he fills up with he fills himself up with rage. He replaces the feeling he used to have uh, before he became this powerful master of Earth. And of course it's K-O-S, not Koss. Kill on sight. <laughs> That's a little, I guess a little gamer joke I'm putting in there. Alright, so what's going to be the name of... Chorubitha Whisper. Maybe it's Lou the kill on sight. The kills on sight. So it's, it's a little silly, but it appeals to me. I think Lou is going to be, uh, Lou is a guy, Brazzy is the filer is also a guy, Chorabitha is going to be female, uh, and Givok may be male, or you may not be entirely sure about Givok. They are, after all, the Hollow. There's nothing inside but rage. Alright, I, I, I'm definitely convinced that, yeah, uh, that we're going the right, the right direction by connecting uh, this to them. So, I'm going to put in Gevok. I don't know if I capitalize it. Uh, uh, this is too large. I gotta shrink these down here. Alright, Givok the Hall is the Earthmaster. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna remember who's who now that I've established it in my mind, so I don't really need to waste space on here. I'd like to leave myself some white space. Uh, to kind of fill stuff in with. Choru Bitha the Whisper. The Whisperer? Crap, did I say the Whisperer or the Whisperer? Yeah, okay, the Whisperer. Creepy. Okay, and... Finally, the Fire Master. Uh, oh, Chorobitha is a sorcerer. That is established by the character's backstory. That'll be cool. This is Brazius, the Defiler. I don't really love the Defiler, but I'm going to go with it. Um, I mean, it could be the Ashen, the Charred, Brazius. The blazing. The flaming. <laughs> uh, see, I just can't think of anything better right now. Right now he's called Brazius the Defiler. 
because he is brazen. Lou the kill on sight. The kills on sight. Uh, or maybe... Maybe there's no the. It's just Lou kills on sight. <laughs> it's like a sentence name. Uh, something to that. Something needs to be said for that. Uh, okay, good. So these are these are growing into interesting little things. What other villains do I have? Mm. I don't know if I want to put any like m super minor villains on here. Um, like, this is just the leader of an Etten tribe. And, you know, it's evil, but, you know, are they part... They're not really part of this, of the con of any conspiracies. Uh, unless I decide to head in that direction. But at the moment, I'm not feeling it. Um, I've got to make sure that the pink chill comes up next session. Uh, so I will highlight that, so I remember. I should highlight it pink. Uh, that's pink enough. Alright. Um... Okay, so Dacio has a connection to the Scarred Earth Cult through the Sword Wings, but has a secret connection. Because Dacio, even though they are the leader of the Sword Wings, um, oh boy, is actually working with the Scarred Earth Cult to further his own ends. So that's interesting. And the reason Dacio is doing that and slaying the curly feathered Spoilers. Slaying the curly feathered folk of the Aracocras. It's because Dacio Well let's put that down. Curly Feathered Era Coke Bros. Oh, yeah. We'll figure it out. Um, 
The sword wings in relationship to... Oh, you know what I didn't put in? Um, the Forgotten's relationship to the Great Unmaking. Which I know is an event, uh, but I'm going to put that on here because otherwise I'm going to forget. The Great Unmaking. Let's see if... suggests anything. The placement on our mind map. Okay. Well, something just came to me. So Dacio has a connection to the Great Unmaking, as Dacio is a um, a very very special Aarakocra, um, not a peacock, uh, but. What are the fiery birds that uh, always uh, revive? And this, I definitely... Phoenix! Uh, Dacio is a phoenix, Aarakocra. I'm writing up with a lot of like interesting Aarakocra types, and I have this phoenix Aarakocra token. That would be amazing. So Dicio. Uh, Dicio desires death. And knows of a prophecy. That the curly feathered Aarakocras, such as one of our players is, um, will prevent the great unmaking that could bring Dicio peace, as he has lived too long and wishes only for release from this mortal coil. And the location on my mind map here is suggesting a connection um, between some things here. So I think this prophecy will have come from a seer. And the seer will have a connection to one of the Dark Six. Um, probably the Merc, because that sounds... Like the future is murky. And that'll help that this is all kind of going to help me establish who all of these dark figures are. Uh I should say the something seer, not just the seer. Uh the savage seer. Shrink that down a little bit. I need a better name for curly feathered Aarakocras. I'll have to think about that. 
Maybe I can ask Emily. This comes out of her obsession with pigeons. Especially the curly feathered uh, kind. Okay. Did I change the spelling of Chorobitha? Hang on. I did. Alright. I think I like... Yeah, that's what we're doing with. Okay. Now, the Savage Seer reminds me of... The Frog Talker. Um, Frog Talker is a Goblin Seer. Uh, who is now tracking Lou. Got the frog talker concept from a Pathfinder book. Which I just thought was too cool. So the Savage Seer is going to have a connection of some sort to the frog talker who has en enmity with. Lou. That should be interesting. So now we are, now it's really starting to come in. I'm getting some connections between disparate parts. Uh, we've connected kind of two of the major uh, nodes uh, of, our, of our vast thing here. So this is getting more and more interesting as we go. Um, I'll just, I haven't connected Chowder to anything yet. Uh, probably was alive when the Kingdom of Ebb was around, even a thousand years ago, but maybe not. So, definitely would have had a relationship with the Vey Empire. Um... So we'll go like this. I don't even know what that relationship is yet. I just know there one one exists. Cool. All right. Well, this is coming along nicely. Um, managed to kind of connect two of my major kind of story nodes here. A lot of these uh, uh, major villain characters. I haven't gotten everybody's name up. Uh, from everybody's story, and I'd really liked to have done that before I stopped tonight. Um, uh, so I'm going to at least get a couple more of them up before I stop, actually. Lord Rothdahl. Um, this is going to give me some ideas later. Um, the pink chill. Um, which is a disease, not a villain, but it could have, certainly have some interesting connections here. 
the Circle of Spores is kind of an important organization, so they're going to have a relationship with all of this. Circle of Spores. Okay. Or it could just be Woad Wax. Nah. He's just he's just the uh, the face uh, character that I've picked up on. All right. Sounds good. Oh, and of course, Stray. Stray. She's just called Stray. She who runs the traveling menagerie. Won't that be interesting? Uh, oh yeah, the uh, the leader of White Witch is a significant witch, uh, which could certainly come into things, but hasn't really been important so far. So I'm not going to put her on the map just yet. All right. I think that's good. So now I'm starting to get a clearer idea of the connections, inspirations, etc. Uh, that I am uh, having as part of my vast background storyline, uh, overarching storyline with this, with vast conspiracies and implications. Uh, and this is going to get more and more intricate as uh, the campaign continues. But this is a good start. I'll just call it Drowned Lagrana. As a connection to Chorobitha the Whisperer. That placement is going to really be interesting next time I work on this. Because that suggests all kinds of connections with the Acolytes of the Shadow, the Forgotten. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's going to come together really nicely. All right. this. See, once you start putting these things on, so Lord Rolfdahl, the self-styled leader of a major city on the west of the Wildlands, maybe he controls the Steeltooth Pack. Oh, this is getting way too interesting. So the Scarred Earth Cult has... Killed some curly feathered aracocras. At Dicio's urging, or not urging, but command, uh, request, uh, perhaps with payment. Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. All right. I'm going to leave this to marinate for a bit, uh, and I'm going to turn off the stream for tonight as it's late and I've got things to do and work tomorrow, so thank you to anyone who watched this or uh, watches this later. I hope you uh, have enjoyed this How to Create a Vast Conspiracy Villain Mind Map uh, stream. I'll probably do part two tomorrow evening or some other evening this week. Uh, at 8.45 or 8.30 my time. So, uh, until later, I'll see ya. Thanks a lot, and I'm gonna turn off the stream now. Bye!